Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. Congratulations to all of those listening who have stopped what I would call the chatter and put that which is the three-dimensional reality behind you. That which you were born told this is the way it works behind you. And instead have accepted something that is beyond what you were taught. That there is a creator who loves you. Who loves you. And that this creator is part of your actual makeup. At the cellular level. God is inside. So much is this obvious to some of you that you would even greet each other with a symbol, a motion. The God in me greets the God in you. The channel is about love. How many channels have I given about love? And why is it today I give the channel about love? Because today is Valentine's Day. Well, wait a minute, crying is no, it's not. This is a test of your linearity, dear ones. Here we sit in this great town, in this great area of Canada, and I have news for you. It's always tomorrow somewhere in the earth. It's Valentine's Day. Tomorrow. And there are those right now celebrating it. So why not you, oh multidimensional creature that you are? Let's celebrate it together. The Valentine is a big one. All encompassing. As big as the universe. And bigger. If God is the creator of multiverses, which are many universes, the vastness of yours is a small part of the whole. Beyond comprehension to all humanity is how big it is. For your own visualization, it's a heart. The symbol of love for humanity. This is a Valentine message from the Creator to you. We've spoken of love before. There are languages on this planet which have multiple names for love. And the names would represent the kinds of love that there are. The love of God is always one of them. The love of a mother for a child, a child for the parents. The love of you for an animal, for instance. The love of human to human. It varies so greatly and yet somehow it's the same, is it not? There are attributes of all of these types of love that are the same. Years ago, I talked about the four attributes of love. I will list them yet again for those who have not heard them. And this is the kind of love that we speak of. It involves humans to humans, God to human, human to God. It's the kind of love that I speak of now that comes to you from the great central source, the creation. The creation source. We have said in the past a profound physics attribute that the space between the electron and the nucleus is pure love. And this was a metaphor that says that the greatest energy on the planet 
It's quantum called love and it is everywhere. Everywhere. You don't have to look for it, you see. It exists in the atomic structure of everything that is. It is the basic building block of all that is, including the consciousness of a human being. It is intuitive and beautiful. We told you before that the four attributes of love go like this. Love is quiet. Doesn't announce itself, you see, it just it just is in all of its profundity and pureness, it just is. Is this beautiful? To know that that you don't have to activate it? If you can stop the chatter, you can feel it, you can hear it. Is it possible that the Creator loves you? Doesn't announce itself. Doesn't have an agenda. Doesn't call for you to do something to activate it. To, it just is. Love has the attribute to use all of the attributes together. It, it's a circle. It is. The attributes of love are profound. They're simple. Love is pure. Doesn't puff itself up. It is so big, it is so filled with everything that is, and yet it doesn't yell it from the housetops, from the mountaintops. It doesn't say, Here I am, worship me. It's quiet. Four attributes of love are easy to talk about. harder to put into practice and we could leave it at that but we're not going to there are some what I will call love assumptions that I would like to talk about and they have to do with humanity if Valentine's Day is one that talks about the love of one for another. This is the love of God for you. And there are some attributes we'd like to speak to you about, dear ones. And I will tell you, in this energy, you need to listen. Because if you're going to feel this from the Creator, you've got to drop some assumptions. Assumptions come from experience, from teaching, from life. They come from what you're taught is the way of things. And in an older energy, quite often the teaching is old. And so we wish to update it all for you. New thinking. Now stop the chatter for a moment. The first assumption and attribute of love that we wish to talk to you about may shock and surprise you and it's called fear. Who invented the word God-fearing? Are you a God-fearing person? If you are, why? What do you have to fear? And you will say, well this is, this is what we were taught. God is, is everything and we're nothing. And so, where's the fear come from? Perhaps you are mixing it up with what the Greeks said were God. They made their gods dysfunctional. So you could fear them. Or some of the other societies who built that which they considered their gods to be strong, judgmental. Squash a human if you didn't do the right thing. And yet somehow that carries over right to you in this modern time and you say, well, I'm a God-fearing person and you're so proud of it. And I'm going to say to you, why? Don't you understand? 
If you use the word fear at the same time you use the word love in God, you really don't understand who you are and who God is. You just don't. You're just saying the words. The creator of this universe knows your name. There's a piece of this creation in you. It resides in you firmly and always has and always will. That which you call the test of earth is about the test of energy with free choice of humanity. This is not the reality that you expect. When you're on my side of the veil, that's reality. You keep coming and going and coming and going and coming and going to process something grand and great on this planet, old soul, and you're doing it now. There's been no greater time than this where this test comes to fruition and you start to see the light win over the dark and the love of God is your fuel it is your fuel and if you fear it your tank is empty as goes love goes earth goes the galaxy goes the universe there are many universes there's things that you should know the very vibration of the quantum energy of the cosmic tone that you can hear that actually speaks of the creation or what you call erroneously the Big Bang is love. It's love. Cosmologists can hear it. They don't know what it is. It's a background noise. It's love. It's the creator having created this universe to get to this galaxy, to get to this planet. And your souls are here operating a test of love. Can you see it or not? And if you do, you will raise the vibration of this planet, this solar system, this galaxy, and this universe, along with others who are doing the same thing. It will change the fabric of love for the future. Universes to come. Time is not something that bothers us at all. The creative source is love. It always has been. It always will be. Why do you fear it? It's time to rewrite it. And if you're using the word, the fear, when you use the word God, Perhaps this will be the last time you do. There's another assumption, size. You're small, God is big. And when you sit and look at the cosmos, even with your own naked eye, it's overwhelming, overwhelming. If you were to be so fortunate as to study the cosmos, and call yourself an astronomer. It is so vast and so amazing that almost every astronomer knows deep down inside life is everywhere. <laughs> Ask an astronomer the odds that it wouldn't be and stand back for an answer you didn't expect. Astronomers know that the odds of life have to be that it's everywhere. You look at the non-visible universe, that which you cannot see with your eyes, that which you can only sense with instruments, and it's vaster than you ever thought. As big as your galaxy is, to think of billions of others boggles that which you would call your sensory perception of reality. And there you sit, like a microbe on a little ball called Earth. So small. God is so big to have, to have created everything. Therefore, the assumption goes, God doesn't know you. 
Therefore, you've got to shout louder to be heard. Therefore, therefore, therefore. And it isn't true. You've got to drop the logic for a minute. The smallness that you believe that you are compared to the largeness which is the universe is immaterial when it comes to love. Love is bigger than this. Dear ones, your soul is as big as anything that exists. That which your soul is, which you paint some picture of, is the fabric of creation. There's a finite number of souls. And some of them are here. And some of them are somewhere else. Known by God you are. Doesn't matter. How small you think you are. That's a bias. Don't assume that you're tiny little cog in the machine. When you're known by God, the creator of the universe. The lover of all humanity. You echo that which is creation on this Valentine's Day. You're part of the greatest heart that has ever beat, which is the Creator's. Another one is this. Do you, any of you understand that the minute you bow down and worship God, you're worshiping yourself? How does it feel? Is it natural? And the answer is no. You would never do that. I want you to look at this differently. The creative source does not want to be worshipped. Did you hear me? We want to be loved back. It's different. It's different than groveling. Or seeing yourself as nothing. Or climbing stairs. Or whipping yourself so that blood appears. So somehow we'll pay attention to you. Do you understand? All we want is to be loved back. Do you know what happens when you love us back? A connection happens. That is the oil that lubricates your enlightenment. Were you aware of that? The oil that lubricates your enlightenment is the love connection to the other side of the veil. Don't worship us. Love us. It's a big, big difference. You have so many on this planet giving you the advice on what God wants, not understanding or knowing what God wants. It's all biased in what humans think God wants. And it isn't the truth. We don't care which way you face. We don't care if you bow or stand. Love is everywhere. We love you to your last breath and then beyond. And when that's over, and three days later when your soul appears and the celebration begins, all you see is love. All you hear is the music of the strings of love. And then you're home, and that's reality. This is not. This is being human. To you, it's everything at the moment. And it is because you have before you a test of energy that you've never had before that is such a grand scale you cannot even believe it. What you do here on this planet next, old soul, is going to affect universes someday to follow. And the irony is, you sit there thinking you're trapped in time, you're going to be part of the universes to follow. Because you're timeless. Timeless. As pieces of God that you are. You'll always be, and you always will, and you always have been. Hard for you to imagine such a thing. Pieces and parts of your soul are other places right now. They're part, parts of you. You didn't really understand that. We've told you that before, dear ones. Love is so grand. 
the last thing we want to tell you. Dear ones, unless you can fall in love with that part of you which is God, listen to me. Unless you can really fall in love with that piece of you which is God, despite all the faults you think you have, until you fall in love with the God part, nothing else is going to happen. It's getting profound. The energy on this planet is starting to become more sacred all the time. You want to know why the dark armies are here? Because they are losing. And the light is starting to show itself. And they know it. Crawling out from under the rocks. Trying to find anybody else who is dark as they are in order to join them and defeat something that's undefeatable called the light of love on planet earth. Love is the catalyst for everything else in your life. If you're going to sit in the dark, you're not going to let love in. If you're going to sit in fear, you're not going to let love in. At that moment that you surrender everything you've learned about what you think is going to work and let the walls come down, the love of God comes in and it is the catalyst for everything. It is the catalyst for healing, life's purpose, joy, celebration, peace, a good night's sleep. You hear me? That's what's going on on this planet. The prophecy of the eagle and the condor is the prophecy of the ancients. Loosely translated, it's when the earth starts to become aware of divinity inside. When the mother energy which represents creation starts to appear in all parts of the planet and the mother energy metaphorically is known as love. The love of a mother for its child is renowned. Some of the greatest, greatest love that any human could have for another human being. And it dwarfs in comparison with the love of God for you. But you got to start somewhere, dear ones. Start with love. Relax and be loved. Start to love back and understand that something's going on when you do. It's not just nice to be loved. It's not just nice to love back. There's physics involved. A connection happens. Your cellular structure knows it. Your DNA starts to become more efficient, improve, heal. Do you hear me? Heal. All because you stretched out your hand and said, I give up. Let's just love each other. <laughs> Is there any greater message on Valentine's Day? The heart that beats for you, that is the universe, knows your name. Now when you stand from this place, stand taller than you did when you came in. I love you. And so it is. <laughs>